How's it going everybody? My name is Alex McGregor and in today's video I'm going to show you how to both focus and calibrate your polar scope that came with your move shoot move rotator or something like the Skywatcher Star Adventurer. Let's do it! So focusing your polar scope is important because when you're trying to align Polaris in a really specific part of the reticle, if Polaris is out of focus, it can kind of be a big blob in the scope. And so it's hard to get it really accurate. So focusing your scope is super important. And thankfully, it's really easy to do. You can adjust the focus on your scope by spinning this ring that is right on the eyepiece that you look through that has these little ridges on it. Now this ring can be unscrewed all the way to actually get inside your polar scope if you ever need to do that to clean it or whatever. But for the most part, this stays nice and tight. However, it seems like when it's all the way tightened, like right now I can't really move it any further, it can tend to be out of focus. In fact, yeah, looking through it right now, I'm looking through it and then out my window to the hill behind my house. And the trees in there are a little bit out of focus when it's nice and tight. So I'm going to just loosen this about half a turn and that seemed to do it. So it doesn't take a lot to adjust this, but it just seems like when it's all the way tightened or maybe too far loose, it can be out of focus. So again, it's easy to do this during the day when you have something uh, easily recognizable, not out in the dark looking for stars. So all the way tight and then loosen a smidgen seem to bring mine back into focus. When I tested this with both the Skywatcher and the Mushu Move Scope, it worked well both times. So that is how I've been focusing and let me know if this works for you guys or if you found something else that works a little bit better. And that is the easy part of this video. Next, we're going to talk about calibrating your polar scope to make sure you're properly aligned. All right, so when we are calibrating our scope, we're actually moving this little plate that lives right inside here that has the display that you see when you look through the polar scope. So it has the circle and the crosshairs and all that little information rests right on a plate that sits here. So in order to adjust this plate to make sure that it's properly aligned with your scope, there's three little adjustment screws that can be adjusted with a tiny Allen wrench. Your scope should have come with the correct Allen wrench, but if it didn't, I'm finding that a 1.5 millimeter wrench is working perfectly for me. So the first thing we wanna do is to test whether or not our polar scope needs calibrated, because if it doesn't need calibrated, we don't need to worry with any of this. So in order to test this, you wanna set it up and I think during the day is way easier because it's just so much more convenient. I'm setting it up in my house and looking out my back door and out that window, I can see the roof line of a couple of my neighbor's houses. So I'm lining up the crosshairs on that polar scope with the roof line of that house. And then loosening this screw just slightly, I'm spinning the polar scope in 180 degrees and seeing if that crosshair comes off at all. Here, let me guys show you. Now looking through our polar scope here, thankfully my neighbor has a very nice shiny piece of metal up on his roof. So we're imagining that that shiny piece of metal is Polaris. Now to check whether or not our polar scope needs aligned, I've set up my Skywatcher Star Adventurer on the EQ wedge, and you can also do this with the move shoot move. I recommend using a wedge or the geared head or just the most stable base that you can. And I've aligned that bright point right in the center with my clock oriented like a clock with the zero at the top, three at the right, six at the bottom. Now we're gonna loosen the clutch on the Skywatcher Star Adventure and spin everything 180 degrees. 
Now with that six at the top and it kind of looks like a nine, we can see that those crosshairs wandered off of that main star. Now if I spin it back, you can see there, it comes back really close to aligned right at the peak of that roof. So we know that because it wandered off so far, our polar scope indeed does need aligning. So we want to use our Allen wrench and those tiny adjustment screws to move the crosshairs halfway back to our main anchor point. So that shiny bit of roof on top. It does take a little bit of like trial and error to figure out how these screws make their adjustments. And you want to be really careful while you're doing this. The procedure from the Skywatcher Star Adventurer manual says that you want to you want to only loosen one screw at a time and only by about a quarter of a turn remember those screws are inside holding that plate in position so if you loosen them too much that plate could totally fall out of position so right now i am going to loosen a screw that is kind of on the top right by a quarter turn then I'm going to tighten the other two screws by about an eighth of a turn and see what happens. Remember, I'm trying to walk that crosshair back towards that shiny peak of the roof. Okay, that seemed to move it the wrong direction. So I'm going to tighten this original one that I loosened. Okay, that is also moving it away. So leaving that one loose, I'm tightening this third one. You can see that's starting to walk it back the direction we want to go. All right, now I think that's about halfway between where it was and where it needs to be. So I'm going to adjust my base here to reline up with that spot. Now that we're lined up with that spot again, I'm going to spin my scope. All right, we're a lot closer to not moving, but we are still a little ways off. Seems like I made my correction too far. So I need to bring that crosshair back to the right just a little bit. Seems like that was the right amount. I'm just going around and very gently tightening all the screws. Now we're going to check ourselves again by moving it back to that anchor point and giving her a spin. Now we are much, much closer. It seems like one more tiny little adjustment and we'll be good. All right, now this did take some pretty decent trial and error, but if you notice, when I spin this, all right, now let's spin it all the way around. And it's staying right where we want it. All right, so that is kind of a pain in the butt to do. It is so finicky and you're making such small adjustments, but I did figure out a couple of things that can help us. So I made really awful diagrams. So the first thing I wanted to show you guys is on this diagram here. If you see this point right in the middle is where we want our anchor point to be. So the bright spot on top of that roof. And this dot would represent when we rotate things 180 degrees, 
and if it wanders off that way, it seems like we need to essentially push everything back to where it belongs. So if you need to move it from this direction towards this direction, you can loosen these two screws just a little bit, maybe a quarter of a turn each, and tighten this screw about half a turn. That seemed to push things back in the right direction. And again, another important thing to remember is we can see on this diagram, if your anchor point started off right here and wandered up this direction when you spun it halfway around, you need to move that anchor point halfway back to your starting point because you're actually really aligned in between your two extreme points and you wanna make sure everything is spinning right in the same spot. So if you wander off this direction, use your adjustment screws to move it halfway back and then realign with your crosshairs right on your anchor point so that shiny part of the roof over there and then test your spin again. As you guys saw in my demonstration, it did take me a couple of tries, more than a couple of tries to get it right, but it's worth it in the end. Um, a couple of points that could really help. I have my move shoot move set on this little tripod just to like for example purposes, but it really is better if you use a big proper tripod, the same tripod that you would be actually shooting with because making adjustments on this like fairly wiggly tripod might throw everything off. So get your good tripod out, get your wedge for your Skywatcher Star Adventurer. I recommend either the wedge or the three-way geared head for the Mushu move, but if you do have a ball head, that can work just fine. Also, um, just want to point it out to your spot, make your spins, make your adjustments, and dial it in. So I hope this has been helpful for getting your polar scope both focused and aligned properly so you can get the most out of the investment you put into either the Moo Shoot Move or the Skywatcher Star Adventure. Um, I'm going to wrap things up by saying if you guys would like to pick up either of these products, there's links down below. If you purchase from the Moo Shoot Move website, you can use the code Alex at checkout for 5% off. And I also have links down below for my one-on-one -on -one Zoom class. Please give me that thumbs up, comment your questions, or if you have any better ideas for how to better align the scope. And that's where I'm going to leave it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. When the stars are out, I'll see you there.